Дата, да. Ой. Anyone coming in, please take your seats. Okay. Um, so this is it, and this is that. Okay, so it's a pleasure to start yet another session of our fascinating day. And uh, my name is Ori Amitai. I am an historian. I'm teach, uh, I teach ancient history in the University of Haifa. And I will also be speaking in this session, but not as the uh, first speaker. The first speaker is Dr. Yael Schwartz, Schwartz from the Weizmann Institute. And she will be uh, giving us a lecture called Using Wiki to Create a Learning Community, the Case of Chemistry Cheap Teachers Leaders. Please. That will be thank you. Um, I'll use it this way, otherwise you won't be able to see me. Can you also hear me? No, no. No. I can't, okay. Oh my God, I never did it. Okay, so my talk today would be about our experience with in-service te chemistry teachers, experienced chemistry teachers, and we used Wiki to create a learning community during a two years professional development program, which aimed at uh, turning these uh, experienced teachers into leaders to other chemistry teachers either in their schools or district or even at the national level. And we used Wiki as the platform uh, for doing it. So just very short, very briefly about our theoretical background, <coughs> which doesn't want to come. Oh. Nothing is working now. Okay, um, so these teachers had to work during a professional development for two years, and we thought that we don't want a bunch of individuals doing individual work and communicating with us, with the facilitators of the program. We actually thought that establishing a community of practice or community of learners is the suitable framework for teachers uh, working together and teachers' development. And there's a huge uh, body of research and knowledge that justify uh, this uh, approach. We also wanted, uh, we chose Wiki because, and we chose this platform because we wanted, we seeked for a way that uh, we could see how teachers bring into the situation their knowledge, their beliefs, their perceptions and attitudes towards 
communities of learners and communities of practice because we wanted to know in our little, uh, I would say, experiment, what prevents, what are the boundaries from having more collaborative work and collaborative uh, learning in high school in general and in high school chemistry in particular. And we thought that if we create such a group of teachers and make them act as a community of practice, we would see what do they bring into the table. And last but not less important is that we believe that uh, we, and in that I connect to Shai, who started the first lecturer this morning in this session. Hmm? Uh, so we wanted a way to portray, to visualize teachers' knowledge and in more specifically teachers' pedagogical content knowledge. Teachers' pedagogical content knowledge, to those of you who are not in the education business, is a very unique type of knowledge that teacher develops through experience. It combines their understanding of the content, they have a bachelor or master degree in chemistry, with their knowledge of pedagogy, uh, learning strategies, and also their experience. How can we actually teach specific concepts, specific ideas to specific students and in different contexts and situation? And that knowledge does not exist in textbooks. It's something that teachers have in their mind. It develops over time. And we wanted a way to portray, to catch this knowledge. We wanted teacher actually to create a database or to create this knowledge that could be portrayed by others too. Okay. So, ah, oh, not again. Not every slide. Makasharoch. <laughs> I'm still pressing. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll do it not in the presentation mode, okay? Just show the slides this way. Uh, I'll do it this way, maybe it won't, okay? So, fair enough, I hope it won't happen again. So our goals for using the Wiki were, uh, what I said before, were grounded in our theoretical background. We wanted to visualize the constructivist process but by which teachers' cumulative knowledge develops we wanted to enable them to work collaboratively, not only when they gather together, we had a face-to-face -face meeting every second week, but we wanted them to work together during the time that we were not meeting face-to-face. -face. We had teachers all over the country. Uh, the northest one lived in Kiryat Atta, which is a little town north of Haifa, and another teacher lived in the Arava, which is south to the Dead Sea and on the way to Eilat, which is about 400, 450 kilometers in between those, and the others were spread also all around the country. We had Arab teachers or Arab-speaking teachers, we had Hebrew-speaking teachers, and we were looking for a way to bridge the geographical boundaries and make them work together outside the face-to-face -face meeting. Um, we also had in mind, as I said, the goal to promote collaborative learning in classes and to work on their confidence and competence in integrating ITC and computer-mediated technology into their classes, which again, in the case of chemistry teaching in Israel, it's not done very frequently and not by the majority of the teachers. So I already told a little bit about our population. We had 20 in-service teachers, and I think there is a difference between in-service teachers who already teach in classes to pre-service 
students. Um, the program lasted for two years. Uh, we had six males, 14 females. We had a huge variety of ages between 32, which in Israeli terms is almost a beginner teacher, to uh, 62, which is close to retirement. And the teaching experience varied from three to 25 years old of, exp of teaching. Uh, but we had one common thing, and that was that for all of them, it was the first time that they created content using the wiki platform. So we were thinking, how can we help these teachers um, to do something in wiki? And we were designing a few tasks, some of them. We went from traditional tasks that we saw that are common in university and college um, courses, like creating a Wikipedia-style collection of concepts. And of course, we chose something that is related to their practice, and so it was about chemical bonding. Uh, they had to develop learning activities and merge these learning activities into the pages that they created. We, we didn't want another glossary or another Wikipedia of scientific definitions and explanations, but we wanted kind of pedagogical pages that are blending and merging um, their knowledge of the chemistry that is relevant and their knowledge of the pe pedagogy that goes with it. Um, they had mini research in their schools, in their community, and we used the wiki to collect all the data together, to organize it, and also to promote the discussion about uh, the results and the conclusions of how can we promote chemistry education. Um, so I'm really afraid to go online with this computer. Um, <laughs> just an example of a web page created by a teacher. Um, then we went to some other tasks which are less trivial, like we wanted them to work collaboratively on a scientific article that was actually published in the Israeli uh, Journal of Chemistry Teachers, which is called al -Chimia. So here are the two first pages of the two articles that were written. Um, all the work was done using our wiki platform. And another kind of task that we were thinking about is we made them use the Proteopedia pages in uh, to create pages in Hebrew in Arabic. I know most of you are not. Who is familiar with Proteopedia? Okay. So I'll go online for this. Who is Agarta? I don't see it. Maybe I did. Okay. I'll do it very quickly. No, I didn't open the Firefox. That's uh, Uri's. That's not mine. That's the next lecturer. Uh. OK, so the Proteopedia is a 3D dynamic encyclopedia for proteins and other uh, biomolecule, biomolecules. It is uh, established by two professors at the Weizmann Institute, Professor, Chaim, uh, Zuss, uh, Professor Joel Zussman and Chaim Priluski. But uh, scientists all over the world write uh, uh, pages and contribute and edit pages in this Proteopedia. And what is special about it is that it has 3D dynamic models, you can actually uh, turn them, you can turn them, you can enlarge them, you can, and what is special is that you have these green links that by clicking on them, it changes the visualiz visualization to show, sorry, Oops. to show what the person wanted you to see. So it's the same thing that we, you saw, the same protein that you saw before, but now they wanted to focus on a specific atom or specific amino acid or specific site. So it is a scientific tool. It is used by, by scientists. And we wanted teachers, first of all, to get familiar with it, 
to think how they can use it when they teach biochemistry, when they teach about proteins, but also we made them create web pages in the Proteopedia for their students in Hebrew and Arabic. And that means that they had to learn how to do these visualizations. They had to learn, um, they had to think about how th they can simplify the scientific concept for their students. They had to think of links to concepts that scientists are obviously understand and communicate well about it, but them, but not students. So we had links to the Wikipedia actually to explain kids what amino acids are or what triglycerides are. And also they created some educational activities, actually activities for their students using the Wikipedia in class or at home to learn some specific content. So these were the types of tasks that we designed for them. Okay, so that was a, pr a print screen of a page that teachers created for their students in Hebrew. Um, and we felt that we needed to scaffold, since it was the first time that those teachers worked in a wiki uh, environment, we felt that we need to scaffold their uh, experience. So at the beginning, and we chose to um, use what we call in education, fading scaffolding, which means we gave a lot and detailed instructions for the first one, and then our instructions become more and more general, and sometimes we just said, there's the, Wikipedia, there's the task, go think about how you can do it. So at the beginning we thought about, here is what you have to do, these are the headlines that we want to see. You have to add hyperlinks to other pages of other teachers. You have to add hyperlinks to some external resources that you use. Uh, we also had some specification of the scope of the task. We said that each teacher had actually to create from scratch at least two web pages for at least two scientific concepts, and then add at least 10 contributions to other pages of others. So that was only the first time they met Wiki that's how the instructions looked like. And after that, we didn't say how many pages or how many contribution. We kind of let them find their way after the first, um, I would say, hints that we gave them. Uh, so we had, and, and the whole thing was associated with research. I'm not sure I would be able to talk about all our research goals today and the results that uh, we found, but I would try to be very quick and talking about the main ones. So actually we wanted to characterize patterns of participations among teachers. Uh, maybe I heard Professor Pellet said that in other, in other uh, places in the world, it is well established and that we are a bit behind. But if you do it first time with a specific community, it's interesting to see if they behave like uh, everybody else or if there's something unique to, the, to your community. We wanted to identify their conceptions regarding the, their experience with Wiki. We wanted to investigate differences between uh, teachers who functioned well and teachers who were less uh, functioning in our environment, and we wanted to investigate whether there are relations to their school practice or not, or actually we didn't go and observe lessons, but we interviewed them regarding their um, uh, views and concept, con um, views of teachers' role and students' role and how they think and how they describe their teaching. How do they think their teacher really looks like? So, of course, uh, we collected all the automatic data that obtained from the wiki database. We analyzed the quality of their artifacts. We had a questionnaire and we did, we conducted individual interviews. Now, uh, we did a little statistics. I don't, I don't really, I will present some numbers, but I don't think the numbers are important because our sample is very small, okay, 20 teachers, 
But it's a beginning. I started collecting the statistical data because I think that if we do it again and again with other groups, uh, we would have a cumulative effect and we would be able to do some uh, meaningful statistics. Okay, so one thing that we, I said we wanted to do is to look for profiles of participation and actually we conducted two analyses. One of them, we kind of uh, looked, overlooked about all the types of contribution that a specific person did and we counted them. So we had what he or she likes to do or prefers to do and the number of co contributions uh, to our uh, wiki. And the second one was actually a very uh, evaluation one. We looked about the task completion of each individual teacher, whether he did beyond requirements and he, he or she did more than we asked, as we required exactly nothing more, you know, like a good student in class, or below requirements, and then we try to understand why. So here's what we find when we analyzed uh, their uh, patterns and trends in participation. So for most of them, the level of engagement and the style, the things that they liked to do in the wiki were stable over time. We didn't have people that were very enthusiastic and very active at the beginning and then declined. We didn't have pe people who were very hesitant at the beginning and you know then started running. The ones who started enthusiastic liked it all over the two years and were very active. And the ones that were reluctant and not very active, that was the pattern that uh, proceeded over time. So we heard about the 2080. We had a slight different, but it's, it's a very normal, I would say, distribution. We had 28% of people that didn't function as we expected, and we call them peripheral members of our community. About 44 function as required, you know, as the good students in class, and 28 were very high functioning and actually were taking all our wiki efforts forward, and they were the engine behind all this uh, thing, and we considered them as leaders of the wiki community. Here's a quote of, that, of David. David was not a leader. David was what we call by the pattern of his uh, participation, a central member. And once we opened, you know, we opened the first page of our wiki, the portal, and he, we had a message there from David. He also sent the same message to all the participants by email, and he said, I think we did not fully utilize the potential for collaboration in our community. And he said, we have to go beyond the tasks that the facilitator designed for us. We have to co uh, collaborate more and do other things. And he said, Wiki provides us with a concrete platform for collaboration. I suggest we use the Wiki and the face-to-face -face meetings to discuss and share meaningful topics. And for us, oh, okay. For us, it was a very important sign that uh, we do have seeds of a community that collaborates spontaneously, we, um, I would say, and go beyond what we designed for them as the course assignments. Um, okay. Here what we can see, I think it's obvious, but sometimes it's really good to have some evidence for it that we have um, significant differences between uh, teachers who functioned well and teachers who were less functioning in terms of uh, their perception of the collaborative efforts, and I would show you quotes later, in terms of preferences of the working uh, environment. Some people said, no, I wouldn't prefer doing it in the wiki. I would prefer send you a Word document by email. Um, that was the low functioning one. And of course, ownership and satisfaction with the um, common product of the whole group. So the, the ones who are highly functioning were more proud, they felt more ownership. And again, it's not surprising. It's very, I would say, self-evident, but it's good 
to have some evidence for it. In other, in other categories that we checked, we didn't have significant um, um, differences between the group. For example, technical difficulties. They, they both reported on a medium level of technical difficulties, which means that this is not the reason why some people are functioning well and some people are not. Okay? Um, so I would now show you two teachers. I would now show you quotes from two teachers about their school experience, and then we would try to think how they functioned in Viki. So this is a teacher who said, uh, my students are active in many ways. We have discussion. They can work independently on the computers. We have working groups. She thinks very carefully about these working groups. Uh, we have a forum. Students who bring laptop to class, which is very rare in Israel, uh, immediately send their notes to everyone, and she's OK with it. And she thinks, she summarizes the description of how her class functions with saying, I think there is a dynamic collaboration learning in my classes and at a very high level. So what, how do you think she would function in our wiki, in our program? Yeah, she, of course, she is a leader of, of the uh, things. And what she said about the wikis is that self-knowledge construction is a fundamental aspect of wikis. You really assimilate and internalize what you have learned when you create your own content. The contrast was Sarah. Sarah said, usually the lessons are frontal. And then she gives me a description. And then I ask, what do you mean frontal? And she said, I talk a lot about 70 times of the time, like we do here. Uh, after all, I have the main responsibility for their learning. So she is very teacher-centered, opposite to Rina, who was very student-centered. And this is what she said about the wiki. I didn't like the wiki experience at all. The most difficult thing for me was to edit or change other people's work. I do not think I'll use it in the future. OK? We'll skip Idan. So we see that there is a link between how teachers act in school and how they acted as students in our program and in our wiki. And when we think about fostering a community of learners, I think it is what we call in education a second order change. First order changes are within the current frameworks of school. It's a small change which is relatively easy to do and usually it increases efficiency or effectiveness of, of learning. And it's common in, in educational system. But second order change is a substantial change in the way teaching and learning uh, are happening. And that's very rare and probably very difficult. And we have to investigate more the teacher perceptions of their teaching in order to come to schools and promote collaborative learning. OK. Thank you. So that's what I said, it's not, it's not research based, it's more based on our dialogue with the different teachers.
תודה רבה. Thank you. Now I have to uh, introduce myself again. Uh, my name is up there, and let me just run the so I can tie myself. Okay. A very fascinating thing for me in, in this session, in the previous session, is that a lot of the topics, well, naturally, a lot of the topics that I have to deal with and that I will address even uh, uh, shortly here um, are encountered by other people and I, I start to get answers. For example, the, the last question was something that, of course, I have to deal with as well in my own institution. But first of all, <coughs> a short story. I started teaching history at Haifa University at the fall semester of 2003, um, eight years ago almost. And because I was uh, a newcomer and I didn't know what was good for me, I was asked, well, can you do the historical workshop? And I said, well, yeah, fine. Uh, the historical workshop is the one course when, where we don't actually teach history. We don't speak about what happened. We speak about how to speak about what happened, right? It's a methodological uh, course that nobody wants to give, and this is why they gave it to me, <laughs> now, uh, uh, being new. And so I come into class, it's about maybe the second week of the semester, and one of the students raises her hand and she asks me, well, can we use Wikipedia, fall of 2003? And I say, no, you cannot. <laughs> you have no idea who wrote the articles, you have no way to verify the information in it, it's not academic, do not use it. Now, obviously, I was wrong. <laughs> and I figured out that I was wrong because you know, t months passed by, and maybe a couple of years, and I noticed that I was using Wikipedia all the time just to get the basic facts about things. And, and more than that, but, but even just to get the basic facts, and the basic facts were, for, for, for the most part, they were quite good. So, now I have to engage this new entity, this new, new uh, player in the game that's called Wikipedia. And this is, this is nothing trivial because until Wikipedia, the monopoly of, you know, about knowledge, about what is true or not, was in the ivory tower. And here now from, from below, this, this new democratic wave um, uh, challenges our monopoly of the truth and of the facts. So I, I figured out I had to, you know, how do I deal with that? And I said, well, I'll start training my students to write for Wikipedia and through this experience, I'll know what to do with it myself. And I bring this up in class um, um, to see what the students think. It was the middle of semester. And then a couple of students raise their hand to say, well, we've had some experience with Wikipedia and, you know, a lot of editing wars and it wasn't very fun and we got, you know, some people insulted us. I said, okay. I went to another class. I tried the same trick. They said the same thing. And then at the same time, um, um, a few of these issues uh, reached the national press and I said, you know, forget about it. I, I cannot compel students. It's not fair to the students for me to compel them. Uh, um, to, to work in, in a hostile environment. So a bit more time passes and I'm thinking, what am I going to do about it after all? And then I thought, okay, if, if in Wikipedia for a huge number of reasons, the environment is, is not very friendly, why can't I create my own environment where I'm the king, I'm the benevolent dictator, right? And if anyone is, is aggressive or hostile, I can just um, um, restore order. So, oh, wait, it's the other way around. I uh, started my own site. And this is uh, uh, Hebrew readers among you. You are very welcome. Uh, please take a look. It's all open. You can't edit. If you want to edit anything, send me an email or, or my uh, uh, staff send us an email and um, uh, we'll, we'll open the username for you. And this is also a good moment to thank three people who helped me when I was just beginning at Haifa, Dr. Dani Benzvi, Shiri Hagani, his, his doctor, um, a PhD student, and Shai Spiller, uh, head of our uh, computing services. Uh, they gave me a lot of much needed help. 
early on. Now, okay, I use the word experiment. It's not an experiment in the scientific uh, um, meaning. It's an experiment in the humanistic meaning, in terms of I'm doing things that I don't know anything about and I'm just jumping into the water and trying to sp just figuring out what I'm going to do along the way. And first of all, and this is my main focus here today, I'll be talking about teaching, how it is to teach with uh, Wiki. And the first thing, I mean, the, the, the one course that is really has, has branded me as a Wiki user was the intensive seminar that I did. It was my first course, uh, a course dedicated to the history of monotheism from the Egyptian king Akhenaton all the way to the rise of Islam. It's only about 2,000 years of history and you have to cram it into one semester and maybe I'll have an opportunity to say a few more words about that later on if I, if I have the time. Basically, what I did was, and you see the points, I have used and am still using for all my courses uh, the wiki as a platform for everything that has to do with the course. The syllabus, the reading material, images if they have them, assignments by students, discussion, it's all in the wiki and since we're all Wikipedians here, or most of us, uh, you can easily imagine how that works. It's very useful, wiki, but there's nothing really you know, novel about what I'm doing here. At the beginning, I required of the students to work in small groups, small teams, two or three people every team, and they have to publish. We, we had the uh, classes on, on Sunday and Tuesday, because we go to school on Sunday here. Um, and on Thursdays, they had, on Thursdays, the week before, they had to publish their presentation for next week. Now, what happened, I encouraged it along a little bit, but not too much. Uh, what happened is, was that they started talking to each other, I mean, in writing, in the discussion pages before class began. That was a first for me. I've never experienced that either as a student or as a teacher, that the discussion starts before we get to class. Now, usually, I mean, uh, who's a teacher here? Ah, quite a few of us, okay. So if, if you get like these 90 minutes, the first 15 is sort of, you know, shifting into third gear and it takes some time. But in this seminar, forget about it, I would step into class and they were arguing already. So, okay, this is where you wanna be when you're a teacher, right? You wanna have people engaged. This engagement led to a very high degree of student preparation. I doubt that, that I've ever taught any other class where, where students were so well prepared, especially from as, as the weeks passed by and, and the students you know, got the hang of it and realized that other people have sort of an advantage because they've been discussing it on, on the discussion pages. So everybody who, who had an interest had a place to, to work with their interest. And the most amazing thing and then enough teachers here to appreciate it, I think, is that they started, the students started adding reading material to the syllabus. Who has ever heard of that? <laughs> they have to read it after a while. I don't know if they actually read it, but I know that I, I did get some good tips about, you know, uh, uh, academic papers that I wasn't aware of. So, and, and my students apparently aware. They, they, they looked them up, maybe they found them in books, maybe they found them in other, um, um, learned about them in other classes that they took, but I, I gained a benefit here. Now, uh, um, to make a long, very long story short, a few uh, interim conclusions from, from the intensive seminar. First of all, if you really want to use Wiki in a very profound way, a um, um, uh, second order change, as it's been called here, that requires a lot of work. In all honesty, I cannot, I don't have the, the, the time, I don't have uh, um, the wherewithal to, to do that in every class that I teach. It's, it's just, it's too much. If, we, if we're talking about, about the system, learning to, to adapt, then we have to rethink the way that, that we go to class. This is a bit, Oh, okay, you see it well enough. Um, one thing that I didn't, you know, I didn't even count upon it, but it just happened, wallflowers got new opportunities to express themselves. Uh, because, I mean, in, in every class of maybe 30 students, you have two or one even 
that sits at the end, at the, at the last row for the entire semester, they say nothing. And then you read their paper and it's like A to A plus, and you say, oh my God, who is this person? It must be, you know, they probably bought it. So you, you hold them in to your office hours and say, uh, and start talking about the paper, and then you say, no, they didn't buy it, they, they researched it, and they wrote it, and they're actually very good, so where were you the whole semester? I don't like talking in class. Wiki gives a splendid opportunity for these people who are shy, naturally shy, to express themselves in writing in their own time. Now, the more I use Wiki, the more I find out that people, uh, students, tend to, to show more responsibility and show more initiative, and especially the stronger students, because they, they have a sense of belonging, of, of not belonging, of, of the thing belonging to them. And this, in this way, becomes a major tool for promoting excellence. Now, I'm sure, I mean, if, if there's anyone here sitting from, from an academic background, I'm sure you've been to quite a few sessions of talking about, what, about how to promote academic excellence, and everybody keeps talking in, in um, uh, slogans, and nobody, except for you know, giving scholarships to, to people with high grades, there is nothing practical in all these discussions, and I've realized that Wiki actually lets you do that, because the good students, the excellent students, they define their own tasks. They, they, they don't limit themselves to what I ask them to do, they take on the responsibility and they create more and they, and they um, invigorate the, the entire discussion. So if I have somebody who is good out there, I can pick them out and, and work with them further. Now, the, the big disadvantage, as I said, that uh, um, under normal circumstances, you know, the normal teaching load in, in university and humanities class will not allow me to use this uh, every time but there are also very uh, uh, positive sides. First of all, Wiki, I find Wiki to be an excellent course management tool. Um, the university at, in general uses HiLearn. I just saw that the Weizmann Institute also uses HiLearn. I have no idea how much they paid for it, but it's not that good. <laughs> I'm sorry, if there, if there are like HiLearn freaks out there, I'm, 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 I apologize, but I, 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 I hardly used HiLearn because it wasn't very useful for me. Wiki is extremely useful and hey, it's free. Not only is it free, it's extremely flexible, it's highly linkable, and I'll be talking about the links, and it's, it's, it's accessible not just to people in class, but to everybody. Now, maybe especially for you, um, a few words about assignments and how they work. First of all, a big advantage that I get is that I can monitor work in progress. Um, something that happens all the time is when, when students write a paper, at the very early stages they may take a wrong turn, methodologically. Make a, a small honest mistake that is small and honest at the beginning, but as you progress along the, the um, um, you know, you continue your investigation, which is based on, on a wrong premise, then you can get a not so good paper. Students who work using Wiki, I can see what they're doing all the time. They can ask me, they can email me or, or send me a message and say, well, look, I, can I, may I ask you to take a look at this? And then I can catch immediately uh, uh, if there is that, that small mistake that can cause a lot of difficulties later. Just as important, if not more important, is that the work of one student is visible to the entire class, actually to, well, to everybody in the world, but uh, uh, more importantly to the entire class. So if, if there is, if for some um, example, if I give an assignment and out of 20 papers, eight have the same problem, it's a very specific problem, I have to deal with it once and then point everybody else, just put the link and point everybody else to the explanation. Whereas if I had to you know, read 20 papers from, from a page or even from a Word file, I would have to deal with this mistake or with this problem again and again and again. And the people who, who didn't make the mistake wouldn't even know about it because maybe they didn't make it 
one time, but they're liable to make it again another time. So by exposing the work of the entire class to the entire class, everybody learns more. Now, how do I give grades for uh, work on wiki and, and collaborative efforts? Those of you who are uh, uh, veteran Wikipedians know that you can learn quite a lot from the history page, quite a lot. And just yesterday, the party, who was that? Adam, I think it was you who told me that. Um, about a Professor Wiley of Utah who says that he can give a grade without reading the paper, but bas basically on the history page. Because if he sees um, um, a gradual contribution, say every couple of days, so and so many uh, words are added, then he knows that he has a very a uh, conscientious worker who thinks about what they're doing, or he or she. But if you get like one big chunk of text Tim, um, um, copied in um, like two hours before the deadline, um, then you're probably going to get much shoddier work. And I immediately. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm not saying that it's you know, a rule of thumb that will work anywhere, and I don't grade like this. I grade based on contents, right? But when I do look at the history page, there is a correlation. That was, that was very, uh, Professor Wiley's his observation was, is very correct. And also, if, I, if three students work collaboratively on one project, I can see who did what when. And then when I mix and match, because I never, I never allow only one assignment. If it's collaborative, there is always more than one assignment. And then they have to switch teams. And then you see exactly who the strong people are, who were the leaders of, of the teams. And you see who's just tagging along. So you can give a pretty accurate grade at the end of it. Now. So far, teaching, but Wiki, I have discovered to, to my joy, great joy, allows a combination of teaching and research. And this is nothing trivial because I've been trying for, well, since I started my academic career, I've been looking for ways to combine teaching and research. And until I started working with Wiki, I, I couldn't manage it, actually. It was, it was a complete failure. But using Wiki, I've discovered that I can do it very easily. If I'm starting to write a paper and I'm outlining my research project, as you see here on the bullet, I can use the same outline as an assignment in class. I can have people read that, have them read you know, some of the material, comment on it in class, and then I go back home and I type in you know, uh, my notes from, or even in class online, I, I just type in the notes, and the students not only learn, you know, whatever it is about ancient history that I teach, they also see me work. They see how I construct an article, which is basically very similar to constructing a seminar paper. So if they're motivated enough, they can look at what I'm doing and learn from it. Now, okay, so it's a, obviously Wiki is very accessible. It replaces for me the, the old card system that, that some of my professors use. They had these huge uh, three by five uh, collection of cards that uh, if you wanted to transport from one place to the other, you had to bring a small truck. And you know, even if you're using like Word documents for everything, then this document is on that machine as the other document is on this, this machine and you have to, to coordinate everything. Here I don't have to coordinate, it's all in one place, which I can access, you know, anywhere that's not like north to east Cameroon. <laughs> but there is something more to it. The hypertextuality. The hypertextuality is not just an easy way, I mean of course it is an easy way of getting from one place to the other, and it allows people who, who visit my site, and again I invite you to do that, it allows them to um, um, get full experience of what I'm doing. But I, have, I, I, I do hope that through the use of, of hypertexts, we can perhaps bring you know, some sort of meeting point between the humanities and the sciences. 
And the key point, I'm, I'm talking about mimetics and network theory. I don't know if these uh, are, are common terms in this room or not, but if I define topics really, really well, and I organize my system, my database, according to very strict rules, I can then go and measure which topic or which meme or which page has the most links. Where does it link to? Why do certain pages link to other pages and not to a th third class of pages? All kinds of questions. And basically what may perhaps be brought into the humanities is measuring, which is a basic uh, requirement of science. So this is all very, you know, um, um, Unf um, well, it, it's not even half baked, it's like a quarter baked, but I am working on it. Now, um, okay, I see some people are smiling, that's good, because I want to emphasize again that Wiki is uh, um, very demanding and not an easy tool to work with, and it's a good opportunity. I have, I have two excellent assistants who are sitting there hiding at the, at the uh, uh, back of the room and thank you, thank you, because without them, Ronnie and Eyal, they're hiding out there, uh, without them I wouldn't be able to do that. If I were left to my own devices and my own time, my own resources, this, it wouldn't have happened. So if you're going to do it, get good assistance. And okay, he's, oh, he's not here. I, if there are any techies out here. I have some, some technical requests that are very important and that, that can you know, be a breakthrough, provide a breakthrough for us. First of all, give us, please, 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 give us the option to limit the viewing of a particular page. Because what I have today, maybe you'll tell me you know, you're working with an old edition and uh, uh, we can do it today, but if I can just you know, close off a few pages so that only a part of my site is a closed garden, then, first of all, I'm protecting the, the uh, privacy of my students, I'm protecting the sec well, I mean, whatever secret projects I'm working on, I don't want people you know, to steal my ideas. I'm avoiding copyright issues, right? Because if, I, if I'm like, uh, um, using images from the internet, if I'm putting them on my site now, I'm liable to prosecution, and the university uh, is liable to prosecution. If I'm closing off specific pages, I can do practically whatever I want. Another thing, uh, my, my, my version of Wiki does not enable me to delete usernames, and I get a lot of junk usernames, so if you, if you know how to fix that, or you know people who know how to fix that. Hmm? It's already fixed, brilliant. Now, something which I think is much, much more difficult, uh, if at any point a rich, ed uh, rich text editor can be produced which produces a clean code, unlike the, the uh, uh, rich text editor that we use today, that would be brilliant because I'm, I'm one of these strange people who, who like a clean code. So I'm, I'm writing in code but that's a mess and it's a special mess because of the Hebrew. If anyone here can sort this out, You'll probably get a Nobel Prize for it, but okay. Okay, so let's jump a little bit into the future and what I hope to achieve still. First of all, distance learning. I don't know if uh, the academics among you, I'm sure, are familiar with that term. It's the hottest term now, distance learning. It's going to school one place while being physically in another place. What Wiki gives us is that it allows for discussion and interaction in writing, right? And even if you combine, combine that with Skype, then it's almost as good as being in the place itself. Now, the big brother option, right, the, the history pages, allows us to minimize cheating, which is a major problem with distance learning. It won't prevent teaching, but it helps us to minimize it. Accessible from everywhere, obviously, and it may help us to promote academization and democratization of um, uh, school curricula. And uh, uh, to those of you who are Israelis here, 
I'm not happy with school curricula. I have two girls in school, and I'm extremely unhappy with the material that they're using. So it's my duty to create something which is better, I think. At least it's in, within my, my power. Now, we've heard about the possibilities of international cooperation using Wiki, but I'm sure, I mean, academics, um, um, you're familiar with this. You go to this conference, everybody's excited, everybody's saying, okay, let's work together, let's do something about it together, and then you all fly back to your countries and forget about it. And that was it. If we think <coughs> about this kind of thing in advance, if we establish a Wiki, if we put our papers there in advance, we can start, just like we did in my seminar, we can start discussing it before we arrive. We can be extremely productive while we're there. We can carry on after we disperse. And finally, and this is the thing that I'm most happy about and most excited about, is our plans for the Hebrew Wikipedia. The goal, as you see, is a modest one. I want to help in, you know, create the team that will give the Hebrew culture the super encyclopedia of the 21st century. A, a database that will be fully academic, that, that, you know, new teachers like myself, when they are asked, can we use Wikipedia, the answer will be, of course, but use the Hebrew one. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Beginning this fall semester, uh, more than a dozen faculty members at Haifa University and the Faculty of Humanities will start assigning uh, 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 two students work in Wikipedia, writing um, um, essays, articles. The dean of the faculty is behind us. There is a very positive atmosphere. Hannah here, who is... Uh, uh, he, she, she's helping us in, in, in uh, greeting the new Wikipedians and, and um, absorbing them into the community. And basically, we are back to uh, my starting point in my lecture. Can we, as Wikipedians, embrace in a friendly fashion all these in incomers to, in order to create uh, um, whatever it is, the, the, the super encyclopedia that I'm speaking about. Thank you very much. So I guess a, a couple of questions, but I'll have to get out of the light because, uh, please. It will not work for everybody, to be sure. Um, I, there, is, there is some resistance. Well, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it wasn't really a question. It was an expression of doubt, I think, that it might not work and that I'm too utopian, uh, which is something that people say about me often. Um, it won't work for everybody. Not every faculty member uh, will be able to go along with this. Some think that it's a prostitution of academia, that we shouldn't be dealing with that, that Wikipedia is below us, beneath us. Uh, what do they know? What do they know? Um, I, I did conduct an unofficial survey among my colleagues. Most of us use Wikipedia. And anyone who is, actually, who's, who is a user of Wikipedia, a, a, I mean, not a contributor, just, just a reader, cannot afford to ignore it. Now, obviously, I don't need to tell the people here that because we're all invested in it. Can people manage it? Uh, I think they can. I think they can. And uh, to judge by the enthusiasm that at least some of my co-workers show, I think this project has a good chance. And as time progresses, I think that you know some of the uh, old conservatives will retire. Some. Well, obviously, and some new blood will come in, and all the people who come in 
will say, well, you know, but Wiki, it's, it's such an antiquated software. Are you sure you want to use that? As long as Wikipedia uses Wiki, I'm going to use Wiki. But as time progresses, I mean, you can't stop progress. You cannot like it. You cannot stop it. I tried to, uh, uh, the lady is saying that it's, prob it's a problem for the students displaying their mistakes in front of everybody. What I'm trying to teach in class, you're right, of course. What I'm trying to teach in class is that mistake is what you learn from. You really learn when your mistakes are corrected. If you, by, by a fluke, you know, write the perfect article, then you've learned something about the material. But the learning process is, is maybe a bit less, you know, interesting or, or you may gain less by it. Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat that. Basically, uh, what it says is, is that the people who have a difficult, uh, students who have difficulty working in Wikipedia are like the classical wallflowers. I mean, every, each one of us thrives in a different environment. Uh, the, the added bonus here is that we, first of all, add a new environment, so we're giving more opportunities. And secondly, and I mean, as, me especially because I teach at Haifa, I get students, uh, quite a lot of students, whose uh, native tongue is either Arabic or Russian. And obviously they are in a, in a uh, disadvantage in all kinds of ways. And for them, it may be even more difficult to want to present their work. So it's my work, or mine and my assistants, to help them work on their Hebrew as well. And one of the reasons why it is so much harder to work uh, when you do, you know, when you actually go into it and help with all the problems that are there, not just giving people information about history. Okay, thank you. I'll uh, just we'll take one one short question, and while well, Frank um, hooks up his machine, yes, please. Okay, I'll repeat the question. What do I do after I give the same course five times and all the questions, all the answers, all the topics, it's all there. First of all, this is only, I've just finished my second year, so I don't have an answer from experience to give you, but my answer here would be, I'd move on to new material. That, that would be my answer. No, uh, this particular course I haven't repeated, but uh, there are courses, you know, that they're basic, like Roman Republic. But believe me, there will always be yet another Roman on about whom a Wikipedia article can be written. It's not a problem, I assure you. I, it's not a problem. Are you all set? Okay. So 